Hello everyone, welcome back. We are going to use Jupyter for our lesson. You can either install Anaconda and you can find it here at anaconda.com and on the download page you have various versions you can download for Windows, Apple and uh, Linux. Anaconda is a good platform because it installs all the libraries including Jupyter. So in this course we are going to use Jupyter. As an alternative you can install VS Code. There's a version for Windows, a version for Linux as well as a version for Apple. Once you've installed Visual Studio Code you can install Jupyter as a plugin. Once you've installed VS Code, you come here to the extension option and you search for Jupyter. You will have various options. You install Jupyter Notebook. Here I have already installed it. That is why there's a blue tick. You will also need to install Python. So go to the website python.org and here you click on downloads. You will have all the releases for your particular version. Let us look at what we need to use the Assistant API. As prerequisite for this course, you will need to install Python. You can also install Python through Anaconda. And of course, you will need to have an OpenAI account with a payment method. For our lessons, we are going to use Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is included in the Anaconda download. If you decide to use VS Code, you can install a Jupyter Notebook plugin which is available on the VS Code Marketplace. You will also need to install or upgrade the Python Open AI API library using the pip command. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, you will need to have an Open AI account with some payment method. You will need to retrieve the API keys from Open AI API key, and the API key can be installed in the .env file in your project folder if you're using VS Code. If you're using Windows, you can store it in your environment variables. And for Mac, you can store the API key in the profile file, .bash underscore profile, or for newer, newer versions of Mac, the .zshrc file. For Windows, these are the steps you need to follow. You go to the properties of my computer. You look at the advanced settings. You click on the environment variables. You create a system variable called OpenAI API key and you store your API key in that variable. For Mac, you can edit the bash underscore profile file or the dot zshrc file for newer versions of mac you store the api key in these files and you are ready to go i will upload these instructions and attach it to the lessons Here I am in VS Code and within my folder I created the file .env and I stored my API key. OpenAI underscore API underscore key is equal to and this is my OpenAI API key. In this lesson we are going to look at code interpreter but first we need to install the OpenAI Python library. To do that, we type in pip install 
open AI and we run it. It's asking me for my Python version, so I'll select the version I've installed. You can select the version you have installed. I have already installed my OpenAI Python library in the past, and that is why it's saying that it's already satisfied as a requirement. I can check for the version of the OpenAI package I've installed by using this command pip show openai grep capital V version and I have installed 1.70. Next, we need to create a connection, a client connection to OpenAI. We we have imported the library, installed the library, so we we'll import the library. Then we create a client, and we run it. I'm going to create a helper function to display our output as a JSON. So we do import JSON. I'll create a, a method called show JSON. We'll pass in the object. display json dot loads the object dot model underscore dump underscore json there you go and run it okay so this is what is going to happen. We are going to create an assistant. We are going to create a thread. Then we are going to create our messages and assign it to the thread and run the assistant with the thread that we created. And the assistant will process the message and respond with a message. So that is essentially what we are going to do in this lesson. So next we create our assistant. Assistant is equal to client, which we defined. Assistants dot create to create the assistant. And we'll give it a name as we did in the playground. I'll say Algebra Tutor 2. As instructions, I'll say so instructions is equal to in between inverted commas you solve maths problems and show the correct answer. Then we need to specify the tools, which is going to be tools is equal to and I'll pass in a dictionary. The type of the tool is code underscore interpreter in between inverted commas. 
we could pass multiple tools. So we could say code interpreter and also, let's say, knowledge retrieval or retrieval. In this case, we are using only one tool called the code interpreter. Then finally, we need to mention the model that we are going to use. In this case, I'm going to say GPT dash four dash one one zero six dash preview. There you go. So we're going to create an assistant. The name is Algebra Tutor 2. Instructions for the agent or assistant is you solve match problems and show the correct answer. The tools to be used is code interpreter and the model is that model. You can choose the model of your choice. I am choosing GPT-4 preview and we run it. Let's check the assistant. We can say assistant.id. That is the ID of the assistant we created. We can even do assistant. So the assistant is has this ID. That's the instruction we gave. The model been used, the name of the assistant, and the tools it's going to use. Great. Next, we are going to create the thread. So we say thread, again, client, dot, threads, dot, create, and that's it. We just create a thread onto which we are going to place our message. There you go. And that is the thread ID. We now create our message. dot create we pass the thread id so the thread id will be the object thread dot id the role will the role will be user And the content of our message will be solve the fraction half plus half. Let's run it. So that's our message. We'll check the message. There you go. We have the message that's the message id that is the instruction solve the fraction half plus half the role is user and the thread id is that one here So we've placed a message on the thread. Next, we need to run it. So ask our assistant to look at the message and process the message. So we create a run object. We use the client. We run against the thread.
we need to pass the thread ID and the assistant ID. Assistant dot ID. And we run it. We can pull out we can pull out the ID of the run, that is the ID of the run. Let us retrieve the details of the run. So we can say runs is equal to a uh, run is equal to client. runs dot retrieve we are retrieving the run for our thread so we'll pass in the thread id and we'll say which run we want to retrieve so it will be the run dot id there you go so we can say run dot status it's been completed we can create a helper function so every time we can run the helper function and check whether the run is queued in progress and as long as it is queued in progress keep polling till the run is completed let's do that so we'll need to import time, create a function, wait, and I'll pass in the run and the thread. I'll say while run status is either queued or run status is in progress Check. and retrieve the thread ID And based on the run ID, where run ID is run dot ID. So it will keep running as long as it is in a state of status of queued or status of in progress. We'll say sleep sleep for two seconds and once it is completed return the run and to call it we say run is equal to wait wait on run and we'll pass in our run object and our thread object I can also display the data as a JSON there you go so that is the details of the run 
The run was against this assistant we created. This was the instruction, the model it used, the thread ID it ran against, and the tools it used. We also have a breakdown of the tokens used. The prop itself took 302 tokens, completion 70 tokens, and the total tokens was 372 tokens. We can also list all runs. So I'll say runs is equal to client threads dot runs dot list and I'll pass the thread ID and I'll display it as a JSON. Runs. Ah. So it should be runs. So if I have more than one run, it's going to display all the runs. I can also retrieve the step or steps within the run. I'll say run underscore steps. I'll list the steps and I'll pass in the thread ID and the run ID. Made a mistake here. I can show the steps using our helper helper function and there you go these were the steps within the run so first it is in so first it got the instruction as a message then it processed the message and created a response so the order is in reverse the first message was is at the bottom and the latest message is at the top We can extract that JSON. I'll say four step in run underscore steps print show JSON step dot step details. There you go, this is a bit clearer. So this is the first message we sent and this is the second message. Let us retrieve our message now. I'll do messages client threads dot messages dot list and I'll say give me all the messages from a particular thread 
So I need to pass the thread ID, thread dot ID. So that is the message. It has responded saying um, half plus half is 1.0 or simply one. So it took our message, which was a question, a maths question, and it processed the message and responded. We can get the data. So here it is syn cursor page will extract the data. That's the data. We can go one level down and extract the content by doing messages dot data zero dot content. So we are going to here, we'll pull the content out and that is the message. We can also retrieve the value. To do that, I'll do text dot value so we find text and in text we find the value and there you go that is the message that was returned so we can retrieve the message that we sent plus the response from the assistant for that i'm going to create a helper function i'll do try for message in reversed messages dot data print message dot role so I want to see the role and I'll concatenate with message and the content if there is an exception I'll print the error there you go now we have our message solve the fraction half plus half and the response from the assistant which is the answer is one let us create another message so i'm going to use the same thread for that message is equal to client dot threads dot messages dot create so we're creating the message on the same thread so we pass the thread id the role as usual it's going to be user we are the user and the content of the message will be solve the simultaneous equations and find the value of x and y first equation is 
2x plus 4y is equal to 14 and the second equation made a mistake here and the second equation is 4x minus 4y is equal to 4. Okay, let's run it. So we've passed our message. Now we need to run ask the assistant to process the message. So we'll do a run. Runs, create. So we'll run against the thread ID and we'll specify our assistant by using the assistant ID and we run it. I'll copy the helper function here I'll call the helper function I'll call the helper function So our run has completed, the status is completed, and that is the to total token it's used. So let's pull the response from the assistant. So we'll do messages, client, threads dot messages dot list thread is the thread ID I'll print the contents of the messages here we can see the contents of our messages object so first we did the fraction next we did the solve solving of our equation and here is the response the answer is x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2 we can use the helper function we created before I just copied and pasted here. So this was our first message and response from the assistant, our second message, and the response from the assistant where it calculated the value of x and the value of y. Let's pass another message. So this time we are going to create a graph of the equations so the message will go on the same thread the role will be user and the content of the message will be draw 
a graph of the e equations 2x plus 4y is equal to 14 and 4x minus 4y is equal to 4. Let's place the message on the thread and next we need to run So we do a run against the thread by passing the thread ID and passing the assistant. I can call my helper function to check whether it is still in progress or queued and will wait till it is completed. It has completed after 38 seconds. So let's find the messages. I'll find the messages on the thread and I'll pull the latest message that is the latest message looks like there's a file it's created because we said draw a graph I will do dot content so that's the file ID let us retrieve the file IDs so I'll do files messages dot data I'll do zero dot content zero dot image file dot the file ID so I've pulled the file ID and I'm going to use it to pull the image client dot files dot content open bracket the files image data underscore bytes for example as the object underscore data underscore read and I'll do with open my I'll give it a name my nice graph dot png 
and I'll say wb as file file dot write image data bytes running these commands should have pulled the files to your hard disk so this is my graph there you go that's the graph 2x plus 4y is equal to 14 and 4x minus 4y is equal to 4 and it has also put the intersection so this graph here is 2x plus 4y is equal to 14 and this graph here is 4x minus y is equal to 4. We can also list all the assistants. We just do my underscore assistants. client assistants dot list so we are listing all the assistant we can order in descending order and we can put a limit let's say 20 and then I'll use my helper function my assistants so how many assistants do we have here I have I happen to have two assistants one is in an assistant which I created some time back and this is our new assistant which I created just now algebra tutor 2 so that's how we can retrieve all our assistants we can also retrieve our thread because maybe we want to use the same thread to post more messages so i'll do my underscore thread retrieve and we'll pass in the thread id in our case the thread id was this so i can pass in this thread id to retrieve the thread There you go. And once I've finished with my assistance or my threads, I can also delete them. To delete them, I'll say, for example, response client dot assistance dot delete, and I'll pass in my assistant id there you go i've deleted my assistant and i can also delete my thread bear in mind deleting the thread will also delete all the messages on on the thread I'll print the response 
There you go, the thread has been deleted. So in summary, we created an assistant, we created a thread, then we created a few messages, we had some responses, one of the response was a graph, and we accessed the graph, we downloaded the file, and all along we executed a run against the thread and the assistant. 